subhanahu wa ta'ala, we praise our Lord, we praise our Creator, we praise the being, the holy being, we proceed towards the one, the perfection of love, harmony, and beauty, the one unique and only being, we proceed towards the Allah united with all the illuminated souls who are aligned with the, with the prophetic spirit, the spirit of guidance. Allahumma salli wa sallim ala Sayyidina Muhammad wa ala ali Sayyidina Muhammad in this month of prayers, this month in which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala revealed to humanity when Qala Rabbukum ودعوني أستجب لكم وإذا سألك عبادي عني فإني قريب أجيب دعوة الداعي إذا دعان فليستجيبوا لي وليؤمنوا بي لعلهم يرشدون In this month where the ibad, the seekers of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala are invited to, to pray We need, first of all, to understand what's a prayer. What's a real prayer? A real prayer is praise to God. That's the heart and the main pillar of, of a prayer. The heart and the most important part in a prayer is praise to God. What's the meaning of praise? Praise is appreciated. It's to appreciate God. It's to appreciate the divine gifts. It's to appreciate the divine uh, presence. It's to appreciate, it's to open the heart more and more to the divine beauty that we can see in manifestations. That's the heart of the prayer. Because we can never be too grateful. The prayer trains the soul to be more appreciative of divine goodness. Real prayer needs no words. It's a, it's a state. It's a spiritual state. The reality. The real prayer is a spiritual state. It's a state of openness and invitation uh, to, to the divine to come. Yeah. Basically, it's a state in which you are, you are, with the, your whole being, you are calling God, come. But the action now of prayer, saying words, articulating words, articulating our Thoughts and, you know, in words of praise, in words of begging, in words of supplication, in words of invocation, it helps us to reach the inner plane of our own being. That is why the prayer, when it is repeated aloud, it has a greater effect on the soul. That is why when it is repeated in, in big number, it may also amplify that effect. For, for beginners on spiritual journey, and we are all begin, beginners on the spiritual journey. So the words, sound, movement, they help us to reach in and engage our whole being in prayer. That's the function. It's not to be impressed by the beauty. It's to, for us to, to be more impacted, for us to be more engaged. Our blood, our nerves, our skin, but also mental, rational, emotional, spiritual, all come together. The prayer, the action of prayer, tajma'una, that's what Salat al-Jama'ah is. 
صلاة الجمع أولى من صلاة الجماعة. The prayer that does not bring you together as one being is not a prayer. Now, if the prayer in group helps you to bring yourself together, so, so it, let, let it be. It's good. But now, if the prayer in group will be a source of destruction, it's better for you maybe to pray alone and bring yourself together. Because that's, that is what is more important, is that you come together. You engage. The tongue is praying. The eyes are praying. The ears are praying. The skin is praying. The heart is praying. The mind is praying. All your dimensions, you bring yourself together. You engage your mind in the prayer through imagination. And that's where the divine names come. All the divine names are projections on the screen of our human intelligence. They are meanings that we can relate to. Because when I tell you Allah, it's Allah. What? What? Can you relate to Allah in the cosmic, in the things around you? You can't. But if I tell you Rahim, Oh, you remember your mother. If I tell you Ghafoor, forgiver, hopefully you can remember your father. Maybe at least forgave you once. I wasn't punishing you every time. If I tell you Qadr, you remember someone who is Qadr, capable. All the divine names are there to activate our imagination. They are not there to describe Allah. They are there to approach the meaning for us. They are there to, be, to build a bridge between us and the divine essence so we can actually relate and engage. Now that imagination, it helps us to bring the presence of God before us. The divine names, they play that role. When you say, Ya Hai, for example, you bring your consciousness to a level when it realizes that no one is so living, so intelligible as God himself. Your prayer becomes alive. You pray with living words, words filled with the life of God himself. And then that prayer will bring the heavens to earth and will take the earth to heavens. That prayer will be a, a communion between earth and heavens. And then you understand, Ana jalisu man dakarani. I am with the one who is invoking me. And then you understand why it is, Ud'uni astajib lakum and not astajibu lakum. With no delay. With no delay. A living prayer. A prayer that you are truly living and a living prayer that is coming live stream, that is coming inspired. So it's actually the divine inspiration in you that is praying. You are taking your words and, and the energy from God who is telling you pray now, I'm listening. That's the meaning of the prophetic teaching, the futiha. للعبد باب الدعاء فليسأل فإن الله إذا فتح للعبد في الدعاء فليسأل فإن الله يستجيب له If you find yourself inspired in, in a prayer if, if, if you find yourself inspired to pray pray because that's a, <coughs> that's a, God listening to you there وَإِذْ قَالَ رَبُّكُمْ أُدْعُونِي أَسْتَجِبْ لَكُمْ And it's not وَإِذْ قَالَ اللَّهُ أُدْعُونِي أَسْتَجِبْ لَكُمْ And there is a very important meaning there. رَبُّكُمْ the, the Lord, the, 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 the developer of your beings, your teacher, your nourisher, that's what the tarbiyah is, 
your teacher, the nourisher of your being, the murabbi, the, the, you know, the, the master of your life, but also the nourisher of your being, the teacher of your being, the teacher of your soul, the teacher of your heart, is telling you, invite me. And I respond to you. So then we understand that a dua, the prayers, have many have many dimensions. It's there to teach us something. It's not just an exercise to it's a, we engage in the in, 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 in the prayer to learn many things. The action of prayer is is nourishing to our mind, nourishing to our soul nourishing to our to 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 our rational nourishing to our relationship with God nourishing to us it is shaping us the prayer is there to actually to rabbina to ghazina is there to increase us to help us grow we grow in prayer and we grow with the prayer A living prayer will help you grow. <coughs> will help you grow in your intelligence, in your conception of God, in your perception of God, in your reception of God. <coughs> because it is living, it is alive. So there are, I want to mention five pillars for the prayer. Five aspects, five dimensions, five uh, uh, functions of the prayer. I'm not talking about the five pillars of Islam, and I'm not talking about the five prayers every day, even though we can make a connection. But each prayer, the prayer, just talking to God, has five, actually, roles at least five, I'm going to count five, five rules that a prayer, the prayer is meant to fulfill in your life. The first one is thanksgiving. The prayer is a teacher to teach you to be thankful. And that's why the Prophet ﷺ insisted, and even the Divine Intelligence showed us that always start the dua with Alhamdulillah. And the Prophetic Intelligence taught us, if we don't start the dua with Alhamdulillah, that dua is abtar or aqta' or la barakata fi. It is cut, it's not, it's ugly. It's not a good thing. You have to start with Alhamdulillah. Now Alhamdulillah is more than saying Alhamdulillah. It's an exercise in which we engage ourselves to reach the state of Alhamdulillah. Thanksgiving is giving thanks to God for all the numberless blessings that are bestowed upon us at every moment of the day and night, of which man is mostly unconscious. Also, it is an exercise that takes us away from the unconscious pattern that all humans have, which is counting what? Huh? Miseries. miseries. Enumerating miseries. Unconsciously speaking, any human being by default, well, Asr in al-Insan, so he's counting his khusr. I lost this, I lost this, I lost this, I lost this, I lost this. Unconsciously, take any human being without engaging, except those who are engaged in Iman development through spiritual action, through mutual reminder about the truth perseverance but the human being by default is in khusr is in loss and then by default is enumerating his miseries 
this happened to me, this happened to me, this happened to me, that one did this to me, that one did this to me, this. Unconsciously, we are not Hamidun, we are Kafirun. Unconsciously. Only conscious people can actually come to Alhamdulillah. So that's why we need to do that exercise. وَإِن نِعْمَةَ اللَّهِ لَا تَحْصُوهَا It is actually telling us, start counting. It's an exercise. Start counting the blessings until you reach a moment, until you become really impressed, until you become really convinced that there are too many blessings in your life that you cannot actually count them. And then, العجز عن الإدراك إدراك. Then you become hamd. You will, you will never be able to count all of them, but you have to engage yourself in that exercise to get to the spiritual state that I cannot count the blessings. Because otherwise, how are you? Alhamdulillah. For what? An exercise we can teach our kids. We can teach ourselves, but start with them because maybe our share from the religion is just theory. But at least we can transmit it to better people, inshallah, than us, a better generation. Hopefully they can live it. But yes, even if you are not to that level, you can help your children engage in Salatul Hamad every day. Wake up in the morning now. Yalla Bismillah. Day and night, two times. Don't teach them the five prayers yet. Don't worry. The monkey in them will get the movements <coughs> even when they get older. Don't worry. We have, we have a monkey in us that can imitate. We have, we have robots. Don't want them to be robots. At the new door of the masjid, I'm going to put a check, say, I'm not a robot. <laughs> then, then you can enter. There won't be a fog. There will be check, I'm not a robot. <laughs> then you can enter. If I'm not if you're a robot, you stay outside. No, seriously. The robotic aspect in us, the monkey in us, is, 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 it's easy for us to, to, to gesticulate and do things and gesture. You see the babies that, oh, I'm proud of my son, he's learning prayer. No, he's just imitating the movement. He's not learning prayer. It's not time for him. But you can teach him to be kind and to be happy. That means to be thankful. <laughs> That's it. Don't rush to teach him movements. It's not, it's not time yet. It will come. It will come. Salatul Hamd, just come in the morning. Wake up. How are you? Smile, laugh. How are you doing? Can we count the blessings? Did you see beautiful dreams? Did you sleep well? <coughs> Get that. Extract that Hamd, that genuine Hamd. And that's what the function of the prayer is. It's not just to say, Alhamdulillah, Rabbil Alameen, after that you start enumerating your miseries to Allah. <laughs> really take some time to, to say generally, Alhamdulillah, Rabbil Alameen, four, and four, and four, and four, and four, and four, and four. Imam Ali, ala aqlin nammaytah, wa ala qalbin ghaddaytah, wa ala lisanan wafaqtah, wa ala, oh Allah, akbar. <laughs> The dua should be like more than half of it is Alhamdulillah. Those who remember Dua Al Qunut with us like last year, just it's all Alhamdulillah. And after that, maybe ask one thing or two. But sometimes you are engaged in Alhamdulillah, you cannot even. What am I going to say? If you get, if the door of of Hamd opens to you, that's it. It's really, you know, it takes you. So. The most basic blessing that we are forgetting and we need to remind ourselves of and for which thanks are due is just the simple fact of existing. The sun, the air, the, the... So we need to get there, we need to really feel it. And, uh, and when when you remind ourselves of that, and when I remind myself of that in the prayer, when I start counting them, then subhanAllah, it, it helps me. The pillar number two, or the function number two, the aspect, the dimension number two of the prayer is what we call istighfar. So alhamd is number one, istighfar is number two. And that's uh, laying one's shortcomings 
before the unlimited perfection of the divine being and asking for forgiveness. That helps us to develop the consciousness that teaches us that second part now, the first part teaches us gratitude, the second part will teach us humility. That, that developing us consciousness of our smallness, limitedness, that makes us humble before God. And you know what? There is a joy that the soul finds in humility that it can find nowhere else. And try it. Try to say forgive me to your friend. Try to say forgive me to your spouse. Try to say it, really. Try to make peace. Try to say forgive me. Not make peace through asking for forgiveness. And you see, there is something, there is a spiritual expansion, instant, instant spiritual expansion that happens. As soon as you liberate yourself and you say, please forgive me, and you mean it, really. You see the joy that pours into your heart after that? The grace that comes in your being after that? Try it with, <coughs> with creation. Even to a cat, if you hurt a cat, you walk on the tail of your cat without, 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 without uh, noticing after that, you, you tell your cat, please forgive me, seriously, to liberate you. I've seen people who would say, forgive me for objects if they, if they put the, if they, knock the glass or knock the plate or knock the, the door, they go to the door, please forgive me. Because seriously, there is a food for soul in that. There is a joy that comes, that pours into the heart of the humble person. And the humility is our address. That's where the divine grace is posted. That's our address. That's our home address. God addresses the grace to our address. He sends the, his grace to our address, and our address is a humility. So if you are not humble, you are not home. You miss the package. The package goes back to the, to the post, and then someone else takes it. You need to be home all the time to receive the package of the divine grace, and our home, that's our address, is a humility, a humility, human. Huh? You see, the human must be humble, otherwise it's not a human. That teaches us, that istighfar teaches us a humility. It helps us to, to find that joy. And also, we make lots of mistakes. But the biggest mistake out of all of them is denying our mistakes. So the part of istighfar also needs to be uh, developing. Take your time for istighfar. There is a, Hassan al-Basri left a full, uh, and actually it's, some people attribute it to Hassan al-Basri, other people attribute it to Imam Ali Zain al-Abideen, but both of them, they actually left big books of prayers, and one of them is about an istighfar, long istighfar, long alcohol for forgiveness. Huh? You see, like the first one, long Hamad, uh, I praise God for this and this and this and this, now for istighfar, I, I seek forgiveness for this. This, 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 and this, and this, and this, also that trains you. The more you taste that to smallness, your limitedness, the more you are liberated. The more you are liberated, the more your soul is liberated. The problem when we, we have that tendency of denying our shortcomings and, and denying the, 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 the the hardness, I would say, or pushing away the hardness and the hardship that comes through recognizing our own mistakes. We see that hard and, and <coughs> hard on our, on our egos, our, hard on our uh, low souls, low selves, so we, we push it away. We think we are pushing it away, but actually we are pushing it down in our hearts. And that hardship and that hardness will go to the heart, and that darkness will go to the heart. And then the more you, the more you are in denial, the more hard your heart becomes. And then also, we will be <coughs> projecting our 
mistakes on others, blaming others, and that's by default the state of the human being. So also istighfar is, is, a, is a teacher. Uh, that's how the prayer, we said the prayer is a teacher. Rabbukum So the, the, the prayer is a murabbi. The prayer has that aspect of tarbiya, of taghdiya, of nourishing, of teaching you. And then the istighfar part teaches you, teaches you humility and frees you. Frees you. Frees you from your little self. And liberates your pristine self. <coughs> it polishes and liberates your pristine self. The pillar number three is to ask God for your needs. And that's what is due to God. Because we need to give something to God that God does not have. What is the one thing that you can give to God that God does not have? You can, you can talk. Your problem. Your needs. Because God does not have any need. That's the <laughs> only thing that, you, that God does not have and you... You can give to God your needs. And that's the, 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 the third pillar of the prayer. The fourth pillar of the prayer, and we find it when we study the prayers of the awliya, you see them talking to God as their beloved one, calling on the beloved. Or just, I love you. Allah, I love you. Huh? I love you. Not, I... Not a, it's not alhamdulillah, it's not I praise you for all these blessings, it's not forgive me for all of these mistakes, it's not please haja, uh, the third thing is al-haja, give me all these needs. This one is I love you. Yeah. And prayer in that regard teaches you how to love Allah because communication with the beloved increases your love. The, the more you say to the beloved, I love you, the more your love increases. The fifth pillar of the prayer, and the fifth dimension of the prayer, the fifth aspect of the prayer, the fifth thing that a prayer can teach you is the knowledge of God, al ma'rifah. So we counted five. Alhamd, Salatul Hamd. Salatul Istighfar. Salatul Haja. Salatul Hub. These are the five prayers. Now, if you can make your five prayers, these five prayers, then, then you got it. But these are the five prayers. These are the five pillars of the prayer. Hamd, thanksgiving, istighfar, uh, asking for forgiveness, laying your needs before God, love, and knowledge. And the prayer, <coughs> it teaches you the knowledge of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And, and that's a very subtle dimension. That's a very subtle dimension. But uh, let us say, al-mukhalata ta'ti bil ma'rifa. Mingling with someone makes you know that person better, right? The more you mingle with a person, the more you get to, to know that person. Let us keep it at this. Prayer is actually mingling with the divine. Yeah. You are actually mingling with God. You are interacting. And that interaction will teach you, will teach you ma'rifa. Mm -hmm. You saw, my dear brothers and sisters, prayer is a science. Prayer is a teacher. Prayer is an art. So let us learn it. It's not a technique. Let us learn it as an art. It's a science, yes, but it's not a technique. Let us learn it. It opens our hearts, it helps us grow, it teaches us many things. That's why it is important to, to read and meditate and reflect on and learn from the prayers of the people of God. And this year we are studying the Dua al Kumail of Imam Ali Nabi Talib. I really invite you to join that online class and, and uh, to follow through. We had one session already. We, we, we are having it every Saturday from 5 to 7 live online. So please 
join join that class and uh, register